Hey guys, this is MadCats101 with our 23rd iPhone programming tutorial. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to run Apple scripts with Terminal and how to get the return value of a program. So first thing I need to show you is the return value. So when you run a command, let's say I run ls, uh, you'll see a bunch of files and folders, whatever. And that's the output of a command. But every command also gives something called a return value, which is a number between basically 0 and 256. So uh, if I write ls dollar sign question mark and hit enter, it'll tell me the return value of the previous command. In this case, ls returned 0. 0 means as a return value that there was no errors or problems or anything like that. Pretty much every command that you run will have the return value of 0. Um, but there is a command just to test called false, and when you run false, it'll return 1. Whenever the return value of a program isn't 0, it's an error. False in this case is 1, and that means that it's an error. Now, it's not necessarily that there was an error, but it means that uh, the result is false, the program didn't do what it was supposed to, whatever. Uh, and the false program, simply the only thing it does is it gives the return value of 1. Now, every other thing gives the return value of zero, pretty much, unless there's an error. Like, let's say I say ls dash, uh, like, all this stuff, um, whatever. There's probably going to be an error, so if I run echo dollar sign question mark, the code isn't zero, it's some obscure error number, meaning that uh, the, the command didn't complete successfully. So, uh, as you can see, it's zero whenever there's a success, and it's not zero whenever there's any kind of error. So with that information, I can now show you how to do a simple dialog with Terminal using the OSA script command. So what we're going to be using OSA script for is to run Apple scripts. And if you're not familiar with Apple scripts, I'll just throw up Apple script editor real quick. Um, it's basically an obscure programming language made by Apple. It looks a lot like English, really. And um, it's pretty simple to display a dialog. You just do display dialog, hello world, and you go ahead and tap run. And it says hello world, I'll click cancel, whatever. So that is Apple Script uh, from the Apple Script editor. But what we're going to be doing is running Apple Script through terminal commands. So there's an OSA script command, and that takes a flag dash E, which means that it's going to execute the code that we put in single quotes after this. So we have OSA script space dash E space, and then in single quotes, which is the apostrophe key if you're not familiar, we write our script. Now in this case, scripts can only be one line. I'm not going to be showing you right now how to make them more than one line, but um, that's okay for now. So we're going to be making a script that displays a hello world dialog. Now, what you might not understand right now is that when you run a program through terminal, it doesn't have a GUI. It's just a command line application. So in order to actually make code run that displays a dialog or shows a GUI, we have to use another application that actually has a GUI. And we can use Finder, but there's a spe specific one in Apple Script called System Events that we're going to use. So what we're going to do is tell application System Events to display dialog Hello World. How about okay? And now if we run this, here's a little dialog that pops up. It says Hello World. I'll click OK. Now as you can see here, it says button returned OK. Let's see the return value of this if we do echo dollar sign question mark and it's zero. Let's go ahead and run this again and click cancel. Alright, it says there was an error because we clicked cancel. So let's echo dollar sign question mark and it is one because there was an error, it failed. Now this is useful because if you're writing a shell script or something like that and you wanna ask the user to uh, click OK or click cancel you can just check the value of dollar sign question mark which is just a normal bash variable and you'll be able to see if they clicked OK or not and uh, your script can use that for logic. Now this is really for those of you who like shell scripting but how about doing something practical with running Apple script through the command line. Well we're, we're gonna do for this particular example is a few things and we're gonna start out with login items. So if you're not familiar with login items let me open up in system preferences so you can have a look here. A login item is a program that runs at login so let's go to my accounts preference pane, go to login items. Here are some apps that run when I log into my machine. Um, essentially, uh, when you put something in here, when you log in, they'll launch. And if you check hide, then they'll be hidden. But anyway, I'm going to keep this window open while this terminal window is open. And I'm going to write the Apple script command to add a login item. And we're just going to add Safari. So 
first of all, let's see where Safari is. Uh, it's in slash applications, so let's just have a look. Um, here's my apps folder. Somewhere in here is Safari. I don't see it, but I know it's here. Okay, so I'm pretty positive Safari is in my applications folder, whatever. We have the path for Safari. So what we're going to do to add it is type, uh, first let me type clear, OSA script dash E, and then in these single quotes we're going to write tell application system events to make login item at end with properties. And then in curly braces here are the properties of our login item. Now a property is like um, whether it has this value for this key, whatever. So one of the properties is the path. So we say path colon and then in quotes the application. Application. Uh, how about slash application slash safari dot app. I hope I spelled that correctly. And then we have a comma after the close quote. And then we'll say kind colon application. And then we'll finally say hidden colon zero. I don't go over that hidden thing in a second. So we hit enter. Oh, yeah, okay, it works. Um, it'll add it to our login items right here. And as you can see, Safari is now in the list. Let's get rid of that. Now let's go up here and set hidden to one. Okay. And as you can see here, hide is now checked. Um, basically hidden is a boolean, so zero is false and one is true. So you can, you can set that. You also don't have to include it here at all. If you don't include it, it just won't be hidden by default. Let me just get rid of this again. Oops, I just double clicked it, so now Safari is going to launch, I think. Sorry about that. But anyway, if I get rid of that hidden and I run it again, Safari will be there and it's not hidden. So um, now let's go ahead and I'm going to show you a couple more things you can do with this, but um, I'm not going to do them because they're kind of destructive. And if you recall from a previous terminal lesson, I showed you how to shut down your computer with terminal, but it requires that you run it as root, so uh, it's not really practical uh, if you don't know the sudo password or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut down the computer using Apple script, which uh, it's, it's pretty efficient and it'll use the GUI so that way you don't need the root password. So OSA script dash and then in single quotes will say tell application finder to shut down. And shut down is two separate words. That kind of threw me off as well. And when I hit enter, and I'm not going to hit enter because I don't want my computer to shut down, but um, it'll shut down your machine. So to get out of this, to get a clear prompt, we just press control C. But basically you can replace shut down with restart to restart uh, or with sleep to sleep the machine. And uh, I'll have all these commands in the description. Um, so anyway, that has been our 23rd terminal lesson. Thanks for watching MacHeads101. Subscribe and goodbye.